Very welcome to our, our Sunday morning service. Um, and we're going to uh, begin our service with our first hymn, um, which will come up on the screen here. Where were I to cross from land to sea and sail afar by sea? Were I to cross from land to land and sail afar by sea, descend the depths of or climb the heights, my Lord remains with me, and we'll stand to sing these words together. call to worship this morning is found in Psalm 150, Psalm 150, and we'll read the full psalm. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, praise him for his mighty deeds, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with trumpet sound, Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Pray, praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that's what we're going to do now. We're just going to come together and praise the Lord our God. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, just for who you are, Lord, and for what you've done for us, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you that we can gather together and we can praise your name, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for the songs that we can sing, Lord. And Lord, just thank you uh, just even for the hymn writers that have uh, written these songs, Lord, and for the words that you gave them, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for music too, Lord. Thank you uh, for uh, even the joy we can get from singing these songs, Lord, and for listening to the music, Lord. And we just praise you for that, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for your greatness, Lord. We thank you uh, that you are in control of all things, Lord, and that uh, you hold us in your hands, Lord. And we just praise you for that, Lord, and we just praise you for your love, Lord. We praise you for what you've done for us, Lord. We thank you for um, the daily blessings you give us, Lord. We thank you for our health, Lord, and for um, our food, Lord, and just all the many blessings you give us, Lord. And pray, Lord, that we just would never take them for granted, Lord, and we know that all that we have comes from you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you that we can uh, gather today, Lord, uh, among uh, your people and just be here in your house, Lord, and we just uh, thank you even uh, for the freedom that we have, Lord, that we can do that here without any fear of persecution or anything like that, Lord, and we just praise you for that, Lord, and we just pray for those who, who do suffer persecution for gathering together, Lord, we just pray for those that maybe have to meet in secret, Lord, we just pray that you would just bless them this morning as well, Lord. 
Lord, we just pray that you would be with us this morning, Lord. We pray that you would just um, be in every aspect of our, of our meeting here, Lord. We just pray that you would uh, speak through Donald, Lord, and just speak into our hearts, Lord, and just um, stir us with your word, Lord, we pray. Lord, we pray for those who are going through difficulties in our congregation at the moment, Lord, with health issues, Lord, and other issues, Lord, and we uh, pray for the Hutchinsons too, Lord, as um, they uh, grieve this loss, Lord, we just uh, pray that you'd be with them and be a comfort to them too, Lord. Lord, we, we just thank you that we can bring them to you, Lord, and we just thank you that we can leave all our issues and all our troubles in your hands, Lord, and we just praise you that you care for us more than we can even think or understand, Lord, and we just thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we just pray that you would just uh, continue with us this morning, Lord, and just uh, bless us all um, as we gather here, Lord, and pray that you would just uh, be in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, now uh, Donald is going to come and take our children's talk, so thank you very much, Donald. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning, boys and girls. Anyone get holidays this week from school? I'm telling you, a few happy faces, eh? So, well, in our church, we have been doing a series called uh, Once Upon a Time. You've heard a lot of stories, Once Upon a Time, and maybe you're told a, a bedtime story, Once Upon a Time. Well, these Once Upon a Time stories, they work through. So actually the story I want to share with you this morning is a true story and uh, now this is probably too complicated for the boys and girls but uh, the person I want to talk about is uh, a lady. She came from Northern Ireland and uh, she was in County Down and uh, well known and somebody told me that originally came from the Shankill this morning when I came in and she had done work in the Shankill and then spent most of her life in India as a missionary. So. Uh, that's we any ideas who that might be? Any of the boys and girls have done that talk or learned about this lady? And there's one actually particular aspect I wanted to talk about is because there's so much you could say about this this lady. When she was a little girl, she had brown eyes and she would I love blue eyes. And she prayed to God that she would get these blue eyes and it didn't happen. I want to talk about that and why the Lord didn't allow that to happen. And even way back, this lady lived a long, long time ago. And even then, boys and girls sometimes think I would like a different color of hair or whatever. But God has made you in a particular way and he's made you very special. And that's really the aspect the boys and girls want you to get this morning. That you're very special as far as God's concerned. And perhaps there's something you'd like changed about you, your image. But God made you just as you are, and he's, you're special to him. And he's made you for that reason. Now, this lady was called Amy Carmichael. And uh, Amy actually was the oldest of seven children. Any of you in a family of seven boys and girls? Quite a big family. Seven boys and girls in Amy's family. And she was born in a, down in, in, in County Down. And uh, she was brought up in a Christian home. She was brought up in a, a very wealthy home. And her, her father had uh, a mill. And uh, they were rich and all of that. And yet at an early age, with all of that, her dad and mum loved Jesus. They were Christians. And so we, Amy, I think at seven years of age, as I recall, Amy asked the Lord Jesus into her heart and her life to be her saviour. That's a very important thing, boys and girls, to commit your life to Jesus. And if you commit your life to Jesus young, not only at the end of life will you go to heaven, but you can have a very useful life. And he'll direct you, and he'll be with you, and he'll guide you, and he'll be your friend all through the journey of life, and that's exactly what Amy done. Amy actually had health issues, but anyhow, she overcome those as well, and at, at 12 years of age, she went to a boarding school, and that was in England. And then, uh, 
going forward a little bit, at 18 she returned home for her father died and the business it took a downturn and things weren't as easy. But you know, Amy went to a big church in Belfast way back in the 1800s and people dressed nice and fancy to go there. And coming out of church one Sunday, she seen this lady that was very, very poor. And the people walked past her. She was only a young girl. And she went over to help this lady. And the other people just walked by as this lady that was poor and would have been described as a tramp. Amy loved her and cared for her. She was very challenged, even as a young girl, that why would you despise poor people? Why would you not love poor people? Because God created them all. And all through her life, she had always then an interest in people that maybe are not as well off as you are, perhaps poor, perhaps underprivileged. And then Amy, as a teenager, I might add, seen these other group of girls in, in the Shankill area too, in East Belfast, who worked in the mills, and they were called shawlies. They wore shawlies. They, they couldn't dress fancy. And because they couldn't dress fancy, they felt they couldn't go into the house of God, and they didn't know about Jesus. And Amy, as a young girl, only 18, 19, started teaching the, the Bible to these girls, and they end up having building a place, a hall. And where three to five hundred of these girls, she taught the scriptures. And, and uh, that hall still exists today. It's called the Welcome Hall. And uh, if you go up Cambria Street, just off the Shankill, you'll see that Amy's remembered. And uh, I just can't read it from here, but it goes something like this. She said, come one and all to the Welcome Hall and come in your working clothes. Because she knew they couldn't buy fancy clothes to go to church. She knew they were poor, and she had the privilege of, even as a teenager, as a young woman of 19, teaching the scriptures to these girls, and many of them came to know Jesus up there in, in Belfast. So the Lord changed this young girl at seven. She became a Christian, and the Lord used her, and the Lord blessed her. And then she heard a talk by a very famous missionary called Hudson Taylor who went to China as a missionary. And Amy was very challenged that she should serve the Lord as a missionary. And God called her to be a missionary and actually she uh, went to, I think it was uh, Japan, first of all, maybe Ceylon and came back. But the Lord called her to India finally. And when she went to India at 28 years of age, she spent 56 years, I think it was, in India and never returned back home. And that's how used Amy was of God. So this was a lady that was really used of God. And that's the Welcome Hall, still exists in Cambria Street in East Belfast and still thoroughly shares the good news of Christ in that area of the city. But I want to talk mostly about Amy today because... Amy is a little girl like you. She had this desire, and she looked in the mirror, and she had these brown eyes, and she said, you know, I would love blue eyes. And she asked God, God, could you change my eyes from brown to blue? And she believed God would do that. And she did, she prayed that prayer. And what happened? She woke up the next morning, went to the mirror, and her eyes were still blue, and she was very, very disappointed. But again, boys and girls, and it's very, very important to pray. God wants us to pray. We need to pray. But God answers prayer in different ways. And Amy learned this lesson as a little girl, because she went down and told her mum, she said, Mum, you know, I have prayed to God that he changed my eyes from brown to blue. And her mother told her something. She said, you know, God answers prayers in different ways. God sometimes says yes to your prayer. And I love praying, and I love when the Lord answers our prayers, and I love when God says yes 
Sometimes the yes comes very quickly. Sometimes the yes doesn't come as quickly as you'd want. Sometimes God says, wait. Just not now. And we always must ask God according to his will. So sometimes God answers yes. Sometimes God says, wait. Not now, but later. And sometimes God just simply says, no. And why does God say no? Not because he doesn't want to answer our prayers, but because God is something better for us. God is something more importantly for us. And that brings us to the point, why was Amy's eyes brown eyes? Why was God not answer a prayer and change her eyes from brown eyes to blue eyes? When Amy went to India, she found out a thing about little girls in particular who were given away by their parents, their mother, because they were looked down upon to uh, what was Hindu temples, and they had a labor there. They weren't treated nicely in the, Hebrew, in the Hindu temple. And one day a wee girl called Prina heard Amy talking about Jesus, and she came to Amy and told her about her problems And Amy rescued that little girl from the Hindu temple. Now, to do that, she had to dress up and go into the temple, and she got coffee and change her Indian people of brown skin, and she would put on coffee in a mixture and do it. But in that part of India, this was the... And I I googled it recently again, that in that part of India, the main color of people's eyes was brown. In fact, very few people in that region had blue eyes. And Amy would dress up and go into these areas and rescue these little girls and dress up and people pass no remarks. Now, had she had blue eyes, it would have caught people's attention that she may not be an Indian person. And over her lifetime, Amy rescued well over a thousand girls from this situation. And that's why God, that's why God had Amy with brown eyes. And so in a day when boys and girls think about their image and maybe people ridiculing you at school, God has made you a very special way and God has a purpose for the color of her hair. He has a purpose for the color of her eyes. God cares about every fine detail about us and you just need to love yourself as you are. And like Amy... Commit your life to Jesus, young in life. Trust him. Pray to him all your life. Accept his answers and serve him all your days your life. And that's exactly what Amy done. Now these slides, by the way, were given to me by CEF and they have a five, uh, a series of five uh, times to speak on and Amy Carmichael. It's a wonderful, wonderful story. But I just wanted to dip in this morning and share to you about A day and age when boys and girls are challenged about their image and how they look and all the rest of it. That God has just made you how you are and you're beautiful to God. And God has you just as you are. And if you commit your life to him, he can just use you mightily. And how God, right down to the fine details of the color of our eyes, can use that for his honor and glory. And to learn from this little story, to pray all your life and to answer... To realize that God, if you ask God and pray to him according to his will, he answers your prayers. He says yes, sometimes it's right away, sometimes it's wait. But sometimes God says no, and we have to accept that. Not because God doesn't like us, but because God has something much better for us. So I trust that from this little talk in Amy Carmichael this morning, her brown eyes, that you will love yourself as God has made you. And that you will trust him and pray to him and commit your life to him and be used of him throughout your life. Thank you, John. Thank you for that, Donald. Um, We're going to turn to our announcements now. Hopefully you'll have got a wee sheet. Um, We don't have a a lot of announcements. Um, First of all, I just want to 
thank Don for coming along. We really appreciate you coming along this morning. And Don will be taking our evening service too. And I'd just like to welcome you all too again and those on Zoom. It's great to have you with us this morning. Um, then the only two things this week that we have is the Bible study at 8 p.m. And it's not on the announcement sheet, but on Thursday morning, we also have our uh, Bible study and prayer time too, or sorry, our prayer time. Um, so that is continuing on during the summer. So although it's not on the announcement sheet, it will be continuing on. Uh, next Sunday then, we have our morning service and evening service, and both services are going to be taken by Pastor Philip Campbell, who was the Korean, uh, minister in Korean Congregational, and in the morning, uh, the local uh, Loyal Orange Order will be joining us for their service, um, so it'll be good to, uh, to have them along with us on next Sunday morning. Um, just a few more announcements that we have. Um, one of them is down at the back, if I can find it, there should be some cards um, which are to do with the Hope for Ukraine, um, which have, we've got these bags um, which we're going to be filling. We've got 100 of these. Um, so if you're able to take a bag or um, the church is hoping to fill 100 of these, so um, if you'd like to take a bag and fill one, there's wee cars to tell you what to put in them. So um, there'll be literature, which we'll provide, and then there's also uh, toothbrush and toothpaste, bar of soap, comb or hair, hairbrush, face cloth, sleep, sweets with at least one year used by date, small toy, uh, no fragile or dangerous, sm dangerously small parts, card games such as Uno or Snap, notebook and coloring book and pencils. So you can either take a bag and fill it in, or you can uh, bring some of those things in and we'll be filling bags. Or if you'd like to make a donation towards that, um, just put it in a wee envelope um, stating that it's for the Ukraine and we can use that money to fill these bags. As I say, we've got a hundred of them that we hope to fill, uh, so feel free to take one, and there are these leaflets down at the back which tell you what um, is in them, and we're going to play a wee video now just about that too. We've all seen the devastating effects of the war in Ukraine. We've also seen the incredible response of people from across the world in the giving of money and other aid. It's been particularly wonderful to see how God's people have been so quick to pray and give towards relief efforts. In CEF, we have over 70 workers in Ukraine. Like many of their fellow citizens, some of them have had to flee Ukraine to surrounding countries. Whether in Ukraine or not, their vision is still the same, to reach boys and girls and young people with the great news of the gospel. This is Paul, the National Director of CEF Ukraine. These children who are in Ukraine and who is not in Ukraine. They have basic needs. They need clothes, food, uh, care, uh, protection. The Ukrainian workers are so thankful for the £20,000 sent from CEF of Ireland, given by many of you, in response to the immediate needs they faced. But what about the months ahead? Our Ukrainian workers don't want to only help meet the huge humanitarian needs of the children, but the spiritual needs as well. They need to know about God, about uh, uh, His love, about His care, about uh, He is uh, Father who can help them. As children are processing what has happened to them and their families, and what the future possibly holds, they need answers to the huge questions they're asking. Why people and even children are dying? Why the war started? Where is God? Why it happens with them? And what will be in future? CEF countries across Europe are joining together to send over 100,000 of these to Ukrainian children. Gym bags, each containing things like soap, shower gel, toothpaste, sweets, games or a small toy. But more than that, each bag will also contain a booklet called Do You Wonder Why? Answering those big questions with answers from God's Word. There will also be a pen, a bookmark, a postcard linking to the Ukrainian Wondershark website and a booklet called Meet the King, telling the great story of Jesus. Would you or your family or your school or your church be willing to be part of this Hope for Ukraine project? We'll provide you with the bags, the literature and the pen. 
and we would ask you to provide the rest of the items. Our goal in CEF of Ireland is to fill at least 10,000 bags and send them to our workers for distribution among the children. Talk to your local CEF worker or visit cefireland.com forward slash Ukraine for more information and to take part. Thank you for the AV team for sorting that because I just threw that upon them at the last minute. So, um, yeah, so if you are interested at all, um, just pick up one of those leaflets and that will tell you a bit more information. And there are a few bags there at the back too. And if you need more, just uh, come see me or one of the other deacons and we'll get you sorted with those. Um, a few prayer letters too. So we have the God's most recent prayer letter. And we also have a prayer letter from... Um, the Faith Mission, oh, their name, Andrew Mabin uh, from the Faith Mission. Um, we've got his prayer letter there too, so there's some copies of those at the back. Uh, so feel free to take a few of those. Um, and just another reminder, just continue praying for our holiday Bible club that will be running from the 15th to the 19th of August. Um, and if you're willing to help out with that, please see Mike um, or one of the other deacons too. If you, if you can't see Mike, see one of the other deacons and I'm sure they'll be able to help get you sorted. Um, we've also got a few thank you letters, which I'm going to read out here. Um, so the first one is from Stephen Singleton, and it says, Dear Strayed Church, please pass on our thanks to the leaders and members of Strayed Congregational Church for the recent generous donation of £200. We really appreciate their continued financial support towards the work of IBI. We have just finished the 2021-22 academic year and are so grateful to God for his help in navigating our way through it. Last September, we started the academic year providing a twin track approach to learning, which means we can now have students in the classroom alongside students joining on Zoom. We are grateful to have the technology and equipment that enables us to do this. We are also very thankful that staff and students have adapted so well to this new method of learning. Our donors are vital to the continuation of our work as are those who support us in prayer. Your gift will aid us to help our students to leave IBI passionate about their faith and commit committed to communicating the Bible responsibly, relevantly, and with integrity. Thank you again for your support of IPI, and I pray that the Lord will bless you in the future. Here's in Christ, Stephen. And then we have another letter of thanks um, from the Hutchinson family. Um, Thank you for the use of the hall on Sunday for the funeral, too. It was very much appreciated at this difficult time. Also, thanks to Jill and ladies who organized and served out on the food last Sunday. We really appreciate that. So thank you for that. Um, I think those are all the announcements. Um, we're going to have our next hymn, which is Father, I Place Into Your Hands. Um, and we'll stand to sing these words and in the last verse of this the children can go out to junior church oh sorry, one other thing i forgot to announce uh, just in case you're wondering um there is a team from america that are going to be staying in the manse this week so if you see cars about the manse don't worry it's not a burglary or at least hopefully not anyway and um, there's a team from america that are staying um, with in the months, um, I think Tom Shaw's organizing this, and um, they're coming over to do a documentary about the revival, so um, they asked if they could stay there, so uh, just in case you're wondering. Um, so we'll stand to sing these words, uh, Father, I place into your hands.
Well, as I said earlier, morning to everyone. I think it's afternoon now, actually, by a few minutes, but it's just lovely to be back here and share a fellowship with the good folk and straight. Now, if you have your Bible with you, perhaps you would turn to two short readings, and hopefully through the message we'll make a connection. So Luke 15, verses 1 to 6, and then we're going to read some verses from Revelation. Uh, that's the Gospel of Luke chapter 15 and verse 1. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, and the Pharisees, uh, the Pharisees and scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he have lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in, in, in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder rejoicing. And when he comes home, he called together his friends, his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. So I, so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety and nine righteous persons who need no repentance. And, and a few verses from Revelation 21. Uh, start, commencing at verse 1, and uh, perhaps we'll read to verse 8. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He'll wipe away every tear from their eye, and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he has said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The thirsty I will give from the spring of water of life without payment." The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Now we'll end the reading there, and as we know, as always, God uh, adds a blessing to the public reading of his own precious word. We pray, our loving Father, we just come into your presence again and the name of the Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for all we have heard, and the Lord, for the privilege of worshiping in his service already. And we do pray, Lord, for Hope for Ukraine project that CEF are doing, and we thank you, Lord, for the workers there today, and we recognize the difficulties in that country, and we just pray for that land, and we pray, Lord, that you will intervene and bring peace there as well. And we thank you, Lord, for the work of Andrew Mabin and, Lord, for the work of the gospel truck. And we just pray it will be used mightily throughout this country. And so, Lord, we just now come to your word and we're asking help from you, Lord. We need that anointing of God, the Holy Spirit. We need your help. And, Lord, we just pray again, Lord, as we often do pray, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. And I pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, two quite uh, different portions of Scripture, but uh, we thought, uh, I'm thinking about just for a few minutes this morning, is the subject of heaven. Heaven. And uh, in those verses uh, in Luke, we hear of how, you know, how the, the, the Lord went after the sheep that was lost, and he, he makes this statement, you know, that every, over every sinner of repentance, there's joy in heaven. Heaven rejoices. Over every person who comes to Christ, one individual sinner comes as rejoicing in heaven. And then the, the resurrected Christ back in heaven as he spoke to John and the Isle of Potmos and under the, you know, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, John recorded these inspired scriptures and he gives us a wee insight into heaven here in Revelation 21. And so it's a, it's a marvelous subject. Actually, Richard Baxter, one of the Puritans, said a daily habit of Puritan Richard Baxter was to dwell upon the glory of the heavenly life to which one was going. That's an important one. I trust we're all on our way to heaven this morning. You can be, and you can be sure of it. Baxter daily practiced holding heaven at the forefront of his thoughts and desires. 
And he once said that a heavenly mind is a joyful mind. There was another saying that uh, some people were so heavenly minded there were no earthly use. Now, I would suggest that until we're heavenly minded, we're actually no earthly use. And to maintain a heavenly or eternal perspective is important. God's awesome greatness creates an excitement in our hearts as Christians. We live for all eternity in heaven with our wondrous God. Whatever takes place on earth, we have a splendorous destiny ahead. And so I just wanted to bring our thoughts and attention just for a few minutes this morning at this service on the subject of heaven. Actually, in the scriptures, uh, I'm told that heaven's mentioned 500 times. So if heaven's recorded 500 times in scripture, it's important that we know about it, we think about it. And I suspect I'm talking mostly to believers this morning who know and love the Lord, and we need to rejoice in this fact that we're on our way to heaven. And perhaps I'm also speaking to someone this morning, as yet you're not a Christian, as yet you've never put your faith and trust in Christ. It's important, and this very day you can make it right and know for sure that we're on our way to heaven. Interestingly, the Lord Jesus didn't give a lot of details in heaven when he was on earth. He mentioned it many times. He spoke, he came from the Father in heaven, he was going to the Father in heaven, and he, you know, like this parable, he mentioned heaven, about rejoicing in heaven, and uh, mentioned it many, many times, but didn't give a lot of detail. We, we, we sing hymns about heaven. Some of them are theologically correct, some of them perhaps are just our imagination. But heaven is an important subject. And I was just thinking about uh, 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 some hymns that reflect about heaven. And there was one, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures laid are, up, are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Now, I don't know whether even that's true for Christians. Are we excited that we're on our way home to glory? That this world is not our home. And even as I was reflecting on that last night, there was a, as a, another we I've heard it somewhere, and I googled it and come up, uh, another wee hymn had said, Somewhere beyond the grave there is a land where Jesus went to prepare by his own hand. And for the saved by grace there is a resting place, and in a few more days it will be mine. And then the chorus goes, Some call it heaven, I call it home. And as believers, we're only pilgrims passing through. I've actually changed my address last week. Downsized a bit and moved into Ballyclare. And that's going to be my home. But not last. Our final home for the believer is this place called heaven. And I suppose the more we know about it, the better. I, I, I was talking to a young girl uh, that goes to our church and she was so excited they're going to Mallorca this week and my the detail. Getting the glasses checked. Getting the suntan lotion. And that's important. But it lasts a fortnight. But you know we need to consider sometimes I'm traveling to my home way up in heaven and Jesus travels by my side and for every Blood-bought child of God, it's a marvelous thing to realize that this journey below, below is only for a short period of time and we're traveling to our home way up in heaven. I was, uh, lived 15 years in Balamone and, and we really loved that uh, before we moved to even a better area down here to this part of Antrim. But there was a man, William Hunter, who went to America and he wrote many, many hymns. He came originally from Balamone and emigrated to America in the 1830s and was a Methodist minister. But he, he wrote this. He said, My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Nor pain nor death can enter there. I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. And even as I was thinking and reflecting in heaven, you know, different verses 
come to mind. And one of the well-known ones, Philippians 3, 20, 21. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform, transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables even uh, to subject all things to himself. Our citizenship. We're talking about the Ukraine and a massive war there with Russia because Russia thinks Ukraine belongs to them and even some on the border are Russian and there's a, a nationality issue but you see for every child of God and it's great to have our national identity but our real citizenship's in heaven. It's great to be a citizen of heaven and to be there and I can tell you there'll be no wars in heaven. The borders will be absolutely secure in heaven. Nothing that defileth will ever enter in. And just to reflect again that heaven is a place, just as earth is a place. Just as I might add, hell is a place. Heaven is a place. Heaven is a reality. It's not sitting in some cloud drinking pink tea and wings on you. It is a place. It's a wonderful place. And uh, as I say, over, over five, 500 times mentioned in Scripture, but it's a place. Get that in your mind. Just as Strade's a place. Just as Northern Ireland's a place. Just as this planet Earth is a place. Heaven's a place. And Jesus said, for all those that know him and love him, he said, and I go and prepare a place. I go and prepare a place for you. And I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, I am, there you may be also. He said that to a few fearful disciples. And sometimes over these last few years, people have been filled with fear. But can I say that there's nothing to fear? Nothing to fear. Only God. And that's a, an awesome, reverential fear. Because for every child of God, no matter how badly it goes, we have this tremendous place called heaven. It's a, it's a physical place. It is much a place as planet Earth. It's mentioned many times in Scripture. Some of the other well-known ones is, you can lay up treasure in heaven. We love to lay up treasure on earth, don't we? You can lay up treasure in heaven. You know the... The Lord Jesus, the disciples, he sent them out to minister and they were excited and they'd done some great things and they came back and reported to him and they were excited. But you know, he told them, do you know what you need to rejoice about? He said, rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Might just stop at that point. Is your name written in heaven? Can you look back at a, a moment in time when you came as a sinner in repentance and faith and trusted the Lord Jesus Christ? Because you know what the Bible teaches, that if that happened, your name was written in heaven, written in a book called the Lamb Book of Life. And I believe indelibly. I believe your name is in the Lamb Book of Life. It will never be erased. It's important your, your name is in the Lamb Book of Life. It can be. Heaven is a place. Again, the hymn writer taking up that point said, Heaven is a wonderful place. Filled with glory and grace, I want to see my Savior's face. Because heaven is a wonderful place. It's not only a place, it's, it's a promised place. It's a, it's a prepared place. And that's important. And because it's a prepared place, and because it's promised and it's prepared, we need to be prepared for heaven need to be sure in heaven. How can, how, can, how can that be so? Well, in that other scripture I read, John 14, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No, uh, he said, you know, no man comes unto the Father but by me. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And he says, I go to a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and take you unto myself. And then Thomas, doubting Thomas, he asked the question, well, how do we get there? How can we sure of that place? 
And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except through me. It's wonderful that not only is this a place, but it's a prepared place and it's promised for every child of God. It's a promised place. And I think I stand on that promise. I'm, I'm glad of that promise. That when this life is over, that I'm going to that promised place, that prepared place. Not because I'm a wonderful person, but because the Lord Jesus made it possible for me. Because he went to Calvary and died on my behalf, because he shed his blood that I might go free, that I might have my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and that I could have this assurance and definite assurance in my heart. There's a promise for me. That man, William Hunter, who talked from a bygone age in Balamone, said, wrote to the promised home and glory, to that land of blissful rest, my Redeemer's gone before me to prepare a mansion blessed. Wonderful subject of heaven. It's great to be going there. It's great to be sure you're going there. It's great to have that promise that we're going there. It's great to have that promise to know when loved ones are in Christ to pass from this scene of time that they went home to glory. But not only is heaven a place and a promised place and it's a, it's a prepared place, it's a populated place. Populated place. The saints of all ages, Old Testament and New Testament saints are in heaven. Jesus is there. He went back to heaven. And he's in the right hand of the Father. He's interceding on our behalf in heaven. In fact, when Stephen was martyred, he stood up to welcome Stephen into glory. The Father's there. When the Lord Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray, he said, Our Father, which art in heaven. There's angels there. I've never met an angel, but there's angels there. There's archangels. It's a populated place. Now our planet is about 7 billion people on this planet. But I think there's going to be even far more in heaven. You think of the redeemed of all ages in that beautiful place called heaven. It's a populated place. And as I said before, our citizenship's in heaven, and that's how you'll be part of that population. I trust your citizenship's in heaven. I trust that you're among that population when the journey of life. Because those people are in heaven that in this age that we live in, they're a deemed people. And they're a, they're a rescued people. Rescued from sin and slavery. And they'll be a resting people. It tells us in the book of Revelation of rest from their labors. A restful place. And then there's a rejoicing place. That population, a wonderful place, heaven. It's not in something to, to fear. It's just something to look forward to. And something that we need to tell others about. Just in case I forget, because I, I, I scribbled it down this morning again. I think it was Warren Wearsby. Because we should be rejoicing that we're going to have and we should be telling other people about it. You know, this is Warren Wearsby now with the Lord, but he said, Rise and shine. Everyone you'll meet today is on heaven's most wanted list. Just want to run that past you this morning. If you're not already on your way to heaven, you're on heaven's most wanted list. It's not the Lord's will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it wonderful that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life? It's a populated place. It's a perfect place. Perfect place. It's hard to imagine that really in an imperfect world. It's hard to imagine that when you watch the news. It's hard to imagine that when you see Putin bombing down Cities, killing people, shopping centers, children. We see some of the diseases in the world and 
some of life's problems. It's hard to think of a perfect place, but heaven's a perfect place. And uh, we read in your hearing, I think, you know that there'll be no tears in heaven. No pain in heaven. My old knees are not doing good at the minute. They tweak every day. But there's a day coming there'll be no pain. I don't like mentioning that, for I know people that are in severe pain. There's no sorrow in heaven. There's positive things and negative, there's no sorrow. It's hard to imagine that. We all have experienced sorrow, but there'll be no sorrow. No crying. No sin in heaven. No sin in heaven. No night, no curse. It's a wonderful place. And on, on, on looking some of the things up, one said, There are no stone cutters chiseling epitaphs in glory. No graves in the hillside of heaven. There are no obituary columns in the newspaper. No funeral processions over the streets of gold. It's a, it's a perfect place. Somewhere to look forward, isn't it? Hope you're all looking forward to your holidays. And by the way, I'm not trying to do down holidays. I'll, I'll, I'll take one myself. That's not the issue. But we need to be excited about this tremendous home we have in heaven. And we need to live in the light of heaven. We need to realize our, our citizenships in heaven. We need to be laying up treasure in heaven. And we need to be helping people heavenward. Helping them heavenward. Whether it's a, it's a believer that's struggling, helping them heavenward. And people who are not yet on the way to glory, helping them heavenward. All should be heading that way. It's a peaceful place. You know, read in, in Revelation again there, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. There's no need for barriers in heaven. No need for locks. It's a peaceful place. It's actually a protected place. A protected place. And, 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 and sometimes we feel insecure, don't we, in life? But to think of a place that's protected. It's a precious place. Much we could say about it. Some of the other points I want to say, it's a permanent place. You see, when you say this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through, you think we're here forever. I lived a bit of a life like that, as if I was going to be here forever. And when you hit a certain birthday, you look back and you reckon that you realize there's a lot of life more behind you than there is in front of you. This is not a permanent place. You, some people live as if there was, this was it, permanent. It's not. And that's why I want to encourage you this morning as a believer that to get our priorities right, to realize that we're heading to glory. And I just run past you that the only other permanent place in eternity is hell. We don't want anybody going there. And I'm rejoicing them on the way to heaven. And I'm rejoicing that there was a day that the Holy Spirit convicted us and prompted us and showed us of the need of a Savior and showed us there was a heaven again and a hell to shun in us. It's wonderful to be saved this morning. And it's a wonderful to have this hope and assurance and the promises of Scripture that we're going to glory. And you know, Peter tells us that we have a, an inheritance there. It's incorruptible. It's undefiled. It's reserved in heaven for you. Now, sometimes you get caught up in inheritances, and there can be issues over inheritances, and there can be rows over inheritance. But I want to tell you, your inheritance is laid up for you in heaven. It's, it's incorruptible, it's undefiled, and it's reserved in heaven for you, what an inheritance we have in glory. And again, William Hunter from Balamone said, he, He's fitting up my mansion, which eternally shall stand, for my stay shall not be transient in that holy, happy land. I trust you're excited about that. And as you read through scriptures, sometimes heaven is referred to as a country, and that takes in its vastness. Sometimes it's heaven's referred to as a city, and 
as we talk about is populated, you think of its inhabitants. Sometimes heaven referred as a kingdom, and that thinks of its orderliness as an orderly place. Sometimes it's referred to as paradise, or a garden, and that gives us an image of beauty. It's a beautiful place. And then we call it the Father, some call it the Father's house. The Father's house. And we think of that as intimacy. And it's permanent. Heaven. Heaven. And there's many other things we could say about heaven, but time's running about just that it's a place, a pleasurable place. The psalmist said, you know, at my right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Not as we maybe think of worldly pleasures, but pleasures and the joy of heaven, the peace of heaven. And it's a pleasant place. Pain nor sickness ne'er shall enter, grief nor woe my lot shall share, but in that celestial center I a crown of life shall wear. Death itself shall then be banished, and the, his string shall be withdrawn. Shout for gladness, O your ransom. Hail with joy this rising morn. Wonderful. Wonderful to be saved this morning. It's wonderful to know we're on our way to heaven and home. And it's great to know, have this assurance in our heart that no matter what happens, it's well with my soul. And with this I end, I was many, many years ago, probably now well over 40 years ago, was walking through Ennis Gillen's show and there was a wee track from CEF for the children saying how to get to heaven from Ireland. How do you get to heaven from Ireland? I've preached that many times since the heading, but uh, maybe a, a mind preaching. How do you get the ball of money from heaven? How do you get to heaven from ball of money might be the better way of putting it. Getting mixed up here. There's another church advertised the next week because they used to go to the two churches we went to, and that preacher, he said, how do you get to hell from ball of money? I like to tell people how do you get to heaven from straight. How do you get to heaven from Andrew? And Jesus is the only way. I've got a, res a reservation to walk on the streets of gold. I've got a reservation when the pearly gates unfold. And heaven my name been written down. I'm longing to hear the trumpet sound, for I've got my reservation. My name's been written down. Has your name been written down this morning? Have you booked your reservation? Sometimes when you're booking your holidays or booking the plane or booking a room, you have to press the reservation button. Have you pressed the reservation button for heaven? I'd encourage you to do that today. I invite you to do that today on the authority of God's word, that you can be sure of your reservation for heaven. And if this was our last Sunday on earth, it would be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And we could sing, He the pearly gates will open, so that I may enter in, for He purchased my redemption and forgive me all my sin. I trust you on your way to heaven today. The Lord bless you. We're going to sing our closing hymn, which is, There is a Higher Throne. Thank you.
Now, I didn't pick that final hymn, but it seemed to fit in with the message. Maybe the Lord's speaking to someone this morning, encouraging someone, or just giving another wee hint. It's time you're ready for heaven at home. Let's close in prayer. Loving Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this hour of worship, and we thank you, Lord, for the good people of Strayed. We thank you, Lord, for this congregation of people, and we thank you, Lord, for the members and friends of the church. And Lord, grant that there's not one person from the youngest to the oldest in this service today, but can truly say, I'm traveling to my home way up in heaven. And Jesus travels by my side. Now, Lord, we just thank you for your goodness, that you'd ever prepare a place for an old sinner like I, that I could go when the journey of life is over to heaven, our final home. And so, Lord, be with us, bless us. We think of those that mourn today that have been mentioned in the announcements. And subject lists like this can be a motive. And it's also a warning for us that are behind that we're ready. Because Lord Jesus, you've done everything that's possible for us to be in heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now part us, Lord, with uh, your fear and bring us to our separate homes and safety. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.